I'm working on a game about exploration in a procedural world. And I'm also developing it with my own game engine that I've been working on for about seven years. Each project to make with the engine, it gets slightly better, but actually there's something I've been missing in it for quite a while. And that is proper automated testing support in order to get the computer to find all of the bugs for me. And should we say that right now there are still a few bugs in this game? So building up my automated testing capabilities is absolutely something that I should be doing for the long-term health of this project. This week really began with me trying to add save support to my inventory system. Previously, I'd spent a bit of time designing the save system. I had a system based on multiple passes and that would allow you to get around some of the annoyances of having like different versions of the game, all needing to be able to comprehend all the save files. So when I actually came to add a new parser, I found that I was missing just a lot of boilerplate code. I ended up having to write a lot of stuff just in order to get the initial save support stuff to work. So I had to start the week, or should I say last week, by just refactoring everything. That's fun. So naturally, the next thing I decided was that I needed to go hard on the automated testing. This is the save file system, so if something breaks, like it breaks, you can potentially corrupt the user's save file. So I don't want to do that. So the problem was that my unit tests were clunky, horrible, lots of repetitive code, and just generally cursed. So. I realized that they needed a complete redo and I just thought, let's have a little bit of a chill session and vastly improve all of my testing capabilities. And that's what I did. So things I wanted to get done, remove boilerplates, get some sort of CI CD system in place and work towards integration tests. Previously I only had unit tests. I'll explain what an integration test is later. It's just a better test. So really when developing software, what you should be doing is this thing called test driven development. What that is, is you, Write your test first, the test fails because the software that is necessary doesn't actually exist. You then write that software, the test should then pass, and then you have the test forevermore and you can run it to make sure that piece of software you wrote previously hasn't regressed or something hasn't broken or something like that. If people are going in to change the code, then actually that happens quite often. And ideally your test should be done as automated as possible. So every time you push something, it should do the whole test plan and tell you what went wrong rather than you having to do it manually that sucks. So previously when I was developing software for this game, it pained and hurt me very deeply to have to be adding features without adding subsequent tests in order to test it because I just didn't have the infrastructure to do it yet. And to be honest, the longer I left it, the worse it would get. So I just decided to do it now. So the first step was cleaning up all of this boilerplate code. It's gross. Essentially what it does is it just keeps a hold of a list of all the tests and then runs them individually. And if any of the tests fail, then you get a like returned result. All of this boilerplate code at the beginning was just a hack from day one. So it was very nice to get rid of it. The way I did this was I had a separate sort of test wrapper script. So that is what the engine starts with. And that actually worked really well. I was also able to do a bunch of other things to just sort of make the test look a bit nicer. So you can see the way that the entries work here. It just means that you can get a title, description, and actual function body for each individual test. And they automatically get registered with the test system in and of the fact that you've called it like this. So that was a massive improvement. Really, the holy grail of testing is to have some sort of method where it's all performed in the cloud and the results are delivered to you. So what I wanted to get done was have the test be run as part of GitHub Actions, which is something I've used recently to build the engine. The problem with this is that GitHub Actions doesn't really expect you'll be testing graphical applications. And also worse than that is that this game does actually need 3D acceleration because it's a video game. So this left me with two options really, either try and get the action to run on one of my local computers and have some sort of runner there, or find some way to try and get the engine to run in the cloud. And I did that one because turns out it wasn't actually that difficult. So the thing is there are actually implementations of things like OpenGL completely in software. But in my case with my unit test, all they did is just pop up a window and then shut it immediately. So that didn't actually matter. So the way I did this using an Ubuntu runner, you installed a thing called Mesa and also XVFB which is X11 virtual frame buffer. XVFB just allows you to run a graphical application inside of a terminal session really. And then the Mesa implementation is what gives you the OpenGL support. And it all just sort of ran as expected, which I didn't really expect to work first time, but there we go. I'm not gonna complain, am I? So the next thing to do was dust off the little Python script that I'd written about five years ago in order to bulk run tests. Essentially the way that the tests work is that each test is its own engine project. So that means that you'd start up the engine, give it the project and it would run it and then shut itself. So if you want to run say a hundred tests, you have to do that a hundred times. So that's what the Python script does. So I sort of had to update it with some of the latest things that I needed in order to get this project to work. 
Again, this is just quite another time consuming job. But the thing is that every single project I write with engine going forwards can benefit from this work. So again, it's worth doing. As part of the refactor of this as well, I also made it able to dump the test results to a file format, which is just universally accepted. It's JUnit, which essentially just means that you can pass it off to some industry standard tool and that'll tell you all about how your tests are doing or how badly they're doing maybe. So now with these two things in place, all I had to do was and then GitHub Actions was able to run every single test as part of the project. And the actual acid test for this thing was to make a brand new test that tested something that had happened to me quite a while ago. Do you guys remember the goblin foot issue? Because I remember it. Now for whatever reason, the asset pipeline had been eating too much glue that day, and for some reason when it tried to export one of the entity models, it just didn't. And as a result, the game would crash horribly when you first tried to boot it up. Now, the problem was that that happened to be the build that I selected to be the first ever alpha for this game, which failed horribly. Now, wouldn't it be great if I could have some sort of asset pipeline that would do all that stuff for me? Oh, wait, I do, because I've spent the last week trying to build that thing. So I wrote this simple test, which just iterates every single possible character model, creates one, and then once it's done all of that, it just destroys itself. And that would be enough to trigger if something went wrong. And boys, you'll never guess what, but this commit happened to be the one that also showed this issue. What sort of coincidence is that I'm actually shocked and appalled, like it genuinely had the issue occur to it, and I've only seen this thing happen twice. So the commit where I tested it happened to be the one that failed horrifically as a result of the fact that that issue occurred. So that's something I'm gonna have to look at going forwards. But do you know what? The test actually did what it was meant to do. Like it alerted me to the fact that there was a problem with the build. So I'm actually quite happy. With unit testing working, I wanted to move on to something else, which is called integration testing. Integration testing is like, oh, if I click this button, then it goes to this screen. So it's like multiple systems working together. So here's an example. There is a bug currently where if you go through to play the game, you go to explore, you generate a world, you then end the exploration, complete it, go back to the main menu, and then go through the main menu to play again, it will crash. And it crashes due to like resource allocation or something like that. I've held off fixing this issue because I know this is something that I should be testing as I go along. So it's things like being able to query a button, being able to simulate GUI events, that's quite a big one. And then also just being able to run tests alongside the actual code base of the game. So you'd have to have some sort of separate section that knows how to run the game as well. Now the problem with this is that in order to get some of this stuff to work, I had to refactor like a lot of stuff. I had to write even more test boilerplate code on top of what I've already done. And it just generally became quite complex. The thing is that as this video goes out, I'm still working on some of this stuff. I don't really have any flashy like video to show you the computer playing the game because I just haven't got that far yet. But you know, that should be out in the next few weeks. And I should just be able to run it as part of my pipeline. That is like the golden standard. and I'm very much looking forward to that. I just don't have it yet because everything takes more time than I think it does. Now, I know this sort of development stuff might not really be that interesting to someone who just wants to see progress on the game, but I just do want to stress, this is very important for the project. It needed to be done at some point, and um, honestly, the sooner it got done, the better. I just simply can't blitz through this. I have to make sure to do it properly. Otherwise, you just will end up with the worst project at the end. So I really do see this project as like more of a marathon than a sprint. And actually, each new feature I add to the engine means just something better in the long term. Like. The next batch of games I make on this channel, I just simply won't have to write this testing boilerplate code because I've already done it. And like, this is my first game that I'm making on YouTube. So I need to do a lot of these learnings as I go. So just bear with me. So in other news, I am still building the new recording environment. It was going quite well. We had a bit of a problem in that it's down in the basement and the basement actually flooded last week. Uh, it didn't go too high. We actually got very lucky because the rain stopped, but the drains were like completely blocked. It would have been completely flooded if not. None of my stuff got affected, but what I ended up having to do was like pull all the carpet up and pull all the little recording section and just put it on stilts essentially. So I had to dismantle it and that just cost me a lot of time. So that sucks as well because I was kind of hoping that at the start of this month I would have my new recording area ready to go, but it seems like that's not going to happen. Uh, it's a shame. So yeah, sorry about that, but I am quite keen to broadcast the failures I have on this channel because failure is actually a very important life lesson and they do happen all over the place. So, you know, not every week is gonna be me adding cool stuff to the game. Outro for this video, check out this computer that I've recently obtained in order to run automated testing on a regular basis. It's probably overkill for this sort of thing, but it's also like 10 years old. Boop, 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 boop.